Welcome back to another episode of Stu and Him Productions presents JM Solve the World. I'm James. And I am still <laughs> well, Matt. Point, point at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is part two of our Get to Know Your Host. Uh, the first one you can watch, it's it's on the channel, and it's all about that Both guy. Yeah. It's all about him. Don't, don't fall asleep. It'll be all right. Uh, see, and that's the thing is he was like, oh, man, we don't have that much. You know, I'm, I'm just a body guy. It, it, I haven't really done anything. And 30 minutes later, <laughs> yeah. So tonight we are going to talk about you, me. Matthew <laughs> Hembry. Um... My name is Matt Hembry. Uh, I'm 48. Yeah. You don't remember how many years old you are? No. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, it, it's good to quit counting at 40. Yeah. yeah. Um, I graduated in 1992 from Buffalo, Missouri. Um, upon graduation from high school, I became a glutton for punishment. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Um, joined the Marine Corps uh, right out of high school, did my four years uh, in and out of the reserves, and then in 2005, joined the Army. Who, who, who is that you went into the Marine Corps with? Uh, that would be one of my dearest friends from high school, Jeremy Vez Harmon. Uh, Shout out, Vez. And the... Biggest reason I believe Chris didn't go was because he was smarter than the both of us <laughs> and he went to college. <laughs> Vez and I both know that knew that uh, we weren't college material. Yeah. But you know, it, it was like in my little story there, I didn't go to college and I developed a career by going to a technical school. So... Yeah, I did Votech uh, my junior, senior year uh, for broadcasting. Mm -hmm. uh, actually worked at the only FM commercial radio station owned by a high school at the time. It was 99.9 KBFL. Oh, yep, it is uh, now, it's now a sports talk. Really? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's part of the ninety eight it's part of ninety nine nine the jock, whatever, but it was it's yeah. a sports talk now. I had my own radio show Wednesday nights from six thirty to ten. Sweet. Um let's see here. Uh Chris had his own shoot show, the uh Steam and Stew Hour. Yeah. Uh then it, 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 which at one time it got kinda of hard to listen to because he played Love of a Lifetime over and <laughs> over and over. <laughs> Um, our buddy Vez had uh, Chilling with Chavez on Friday nights. And then a uh, close friend of mine and law enforcement agent, Jason Lacey, was on Saturday nights. He was jamming Jason Lacey. God damn. I, you're bringing all that back. I remember that shit. That's cool. Yeah. We, uh, I mean... That's actually, you know, and if the, you guys... the tattoo here up at the top, DJFH, uh, we called ourselves the disc jockeys from hell. You know what? <laughs> and if, if he'd have been in a bigger town, like any bigger town besides Buffalo, Buffalo <laughs> <laughs> you, you could probably like pursue that for sure. I so, mean, you might have had eight shit for five years yeah. in Indianapolis or something like that before you actually started getting paid, right? But you know, and I and I, I would have, you know, I. It, it was one of those things, and it, it the broadcasting piece goes back to, 
you know, a little little television show that uh, we grew up with, WKRP in Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dr. Johnny Fever. And see, that's where you, you still got the voice. You still got the DJ voice. That's what's coming through, and, I, I, and I've got to like compensate for that because <laughs> I used to have the DJ voice when I was working at the country bar and DJing out there. Yeah, and you you, you develop the voice. You do. To, yeah. Um, and then from there, like it really got bad when Good Morning Vietnam. Uh, oh, because yeah. number one, I'm a huge Robin Williams fan. Oh, I always, yeah. always have been. Yeah. Um, I missed one the, the biggest, chance. One of the biggest tragedies in, in our lifetime was him taking his own life. That yeah. Was, yeah. Well, and it's, it's like he said, um, you know, and I'm completely paraphrasing. I'm not going to quote it, but he said the, the people that spend their lives making other people happy, making other people laugh. Mm hmm. Those are the ones that are hurting the worst. Right. But, um, yeah. I mean, I that's I, I would have loved to have done it um, at, at career professionally, but you know, uh, I didn't. So we're doing a podcast. Yes. I've got a face made for radio. <laughs> or YouTube. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. So, Marine Corps. Uh, 92 to 96, active duty. Uh, I was a radio operator. Uh, if you look at any of the old Vietnam movies, uh, specifically, we were soldiers. Mm -hmm. It shows them out in the field, and they've got a radio, and they've got a field expanding antenna. That radio is called an ANPRC-77. That's uh, uh, Army, Navy... Uh, personal radio component 77 uh they were picking up transmissions from vietnam but uh i carried one of those on my back right. for a few years um from there went on to a ford control team uh working with uh pilots and uh calling in air on the ground uh blowing shit up because mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I really like to do. Right. <laughs> Just spread hate and discontent on a large array. But during those years, you, you weren't really in any of the shit, were you? No. Uh, no, it, it was, uh, you know, post-Cold War. Um, I mean, fuck, we got into Somalia four months after the whole Black Hawk Down situation happened, and we knew nothing about it. Right. Uh, we oversaw the last Americans to be pulled out of Somalia. Uh, actually went down to the airstrip in Mogadishu. Uh, that, that was my first interaction with the Army, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Mm. People walking around in PT shorts and a T-shirt carrying a rifle. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. No. Had I known... Uh, you know, 12 years later, I'd be one of those nasty army people, <laughs> you know, um, spent time in Japan, uh, actually got, actually got to go to Australia. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually got to see, uh, Perth and Fremantle. And I mean, it was, oh my God, it was fucking amazing. Really? Uh, Singapore, uh, we got to Singapore, um, right after that, uh, that ambassadors, that American ambassadors kid got caught spray painting and, you know, he got caned for spray mm -hmm. painting walls because it's supposed to be a, the cleanest city in the world. Right. Um, you know, there's no spitting, there's no gum allowed in the, in the country, but it's a fucking shithole. <laughs> it, it was fucking nasty as shit. You can't spit your gum out, but you can shit on the streets. <laughs> no, you, you can't have gum in the country. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. That, yeah, that was one of the things that uh, they told us before we got off the boat was uh, no gum. Is that why all the old, old wrestling back in the day is a Singapore cane match? You didn't want to be in one of them because you was going to get fucking typhoid from... The shithole country that it yeah. came from? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty yeah. much, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, 
spent time in Japan, went to South Korea, uh, did get to see Hong Kong before I went to back to uh, Chinese rule. Mm-hmm. Uh, went to Mombasa, Kenya. That was uh, that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, did some training in Guam. Uh, got to go to Hawaii a couple of times. Um, yeah, I mean, you're just kind of bummed around. <laughs> got to see the world. Got to see the world on uh, the government's payroll. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I, I got to see more of the world in the Marine Corps than I did in the Army, and I spent more time in the Army. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I joined the Army. Let's, uh, let's talk about between your, your years from the Army. So, yes. So when I got about? out in 96, uh, I came back home here and uh, uh, joined uh, a couple of guys that uh, I had known for a while, and we joined uh we formed i mean it was already formed but we became blindside yep. and i mean i i think we had uh let's see here to quote a line from the greatest movie ever uh we had a sound powerful enough to turn goat piss into gasoline that was uh by uh, donald duck dunn and the blues brothers there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know, we had a blast. I I I enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed it so much that when I lived in Kansas City, I was still driving down here for yeah, practice yeah. and shows. Um, yeah, Wednesday night shows. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> Metal Wednesdays at the Southern Star Saloon. <laughs> um, no, no, I was still living down here when we were playing the Star. It was uh, what? Nathan P. Murphy's. Oh, the Metal Monday shows. Yes. Yes. When I was driving down, uh, okay. I would work all day and then drive down from Kansas City, play the show, pack out the gear, and drive back to Kansas City to get a couple hours of sleep to go back to work the next day. Yep. It, nobody, nobody in their right mind could say you weren't dedicated at that point. No. Um, <laughs> then from there, I mean, I mean, Pip saying his car wouldn't start. Yeah, they would drive in and pick him up and bring him out. Yep. Yeah, he had no. <laughs> I mean, I you know. Sorry, Pip. I hate to call you out there, buddy. I would. I but, would like to say. <laughs> Uh, I would like to say that I, I lived like the rock star life. Uh, you know, I, I, I'd well, like shit, to say you were dating all the strippers and <laughs> shit back then, man. It's yeah. like, it's like, I was the, I was the single guy and, and, you know, and I've said this before. Um, Chris was our front man. Yeah. That, that's, that's the way it was. He was the yep. front man. Yep. You were the wiser, older guy, if you will. I was the Bank Mars of that of, yeah. the, of our Botley crew. <laughs> yeah, um, both of our drummers, he who shall not be named, and Pip, <laughs> uh, were the quiet type. But right. Pip was more like Adam Sandler's character in the Airheads. Reason why he has the name. Yep. Uh, he's quiet, but he got the girls. Uh, it, it, his first name is James. Yes. Yep. Same as mine. Um. But then the first drummer, he who shall not be named, uh, was just, he was upset because nobody would talk to him after the show, but yet he had his drums that covered him up. And then, of course, I was the showman. Yeah. I mean, I I didn't wear a shirt. That's Uh, that's why your neck is all fucked up today. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Fuck that shit that happened in Iraq, you know. (laughs) That's nothing. Uh, that's nothing. He, he he fucked his shit up here playing fucking metal music. Um, the rack shit. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I, I I had a blast, and I mean, I I didn't drink that much. Uh, I still you know, don't drink that much. You would always bring a bottle. It's like, hey, we're doing Jaeger tonight. You drink like one or two. And we're like, oh, really? <laughs> 
<laughs> or I would bring up bad practice. I mean, we I mean, Chris would buy a thirty pack of fucking uh, High Life, Miller High Life, the champagne the sh- of beers. Yes, because it was nine ninety nine for a thirty pack. <laughs> it was. Then every once in a while, I might bring down a. Oh, I got I got. I got Jaeger Monster guys, and we're like, all right, cool. And we'd all do shots, and Matt would do like one, and he was done. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Uh, or I'd bring down that bottle of uh, red rum because yeah. the bottle looked fucking awesome. My the rum, rum itself, my sucked. Rottweiler drank most of that shit. Yeah, and it, <laughs> and it was out shit. Writer, there we go. <laughs> Rest in peace, brother. Yeah. Uh, the bottle was cool because it was it was shaped like an old pine wood coffin and it was red glass and it said red rum on it. Uh, but that was about as cool as it got. Yeah. The the rum itself sucked ass. Um But I mean, you know, even even when we decided we were going to broaden our horizons and we had a couple of joints and between the four of us, uh we were uh puff puff pass. And we tried to play something. Uh, Cumbersome. Yeah, he who shall not be named uh, decided to end the song, like the solo. During, he, well, he ended the song during the middle break. Yes, and then and we all started him going, "What are you doing?" He's like, "That was the ending." I'm like, "No, that was the mid break." Yeah. So, so then, like, okay. We ended up going to the no living room and playing uh, Madden on Sega. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, from there, New Year's Eve 98, I moved out to Phoenix. Um, I was out there for a couple years. Um, I had a daughter. And uh, I came back to Kansas City. Uh, you know, everywhere that I've been, everywhere that I've, I've traveled to everywhere that I've ever lived. Um, Kansas city has always been home. I mean, shit, I spent 12 years in Tennessee and well, I had my address in Tennessee for 12 years and that was the longest I've ever had a single address. It's mm-hmm. the longest I've ever lived at a, at one place, right. but Kansas city was still home. And I don't, I don't understand it. Uh, because the the first real winter, I was back here. I was like, "Fuck!" I moved north of the Mason Dixon line. Why? It's fucking cold. <laughs> and you're a Raiders fan. And yes. You moved to Kansas City. What the fuck? Yes. <laughs> um, about 80, 86, 87, I decided I wanted to have my own football team. And there was just something about the history of Madden and uh, Al Davis and that silver and black, the bad boys, you know, Howie Long, Marcus Allen, Bo Jackson, fucking Bo Nose, you know, guys like Lyle Alzado, uh, Tim Brown, uh, just fucking, yeah. And I've been... uh, diehard fan since uh as a matter of fact i purposely bought a rich gannon raiders jersey (laughs) to wear in kansas city because yeah the chiefs let gannon go right that was that was the worst mistake they ever made yes because it was uh a few years later they were in the super bowl yep and i i still believe that had John Gruden not been on the other side of that field, Tampa Bay could have been there, but had John Gruden not been on the opposite side of the field as the Raiders, Tampa Bay would not have beat the Raiders. They probably right because because all the all the guys on the on the Tampa Bay side were talking about it was like, shoot, coach, you you told us what he was going to throw there, yeah. So anyway, yes. Siblings. I have uh, an older half sister, an older half brother, a stepbrother that's the same age as I am, and then I have a younger brother uh, who happens to be the only 
uh, brother of mine that uh, we share the same parents. Uh, uh. Bigger there. Yeah, I sweat. <laughs> So, any uh, things you regret or wish you'd done different? Or? Um, one of the things that, uh, you know, I wish I would have had better f- financial advice. You know, not necessarily like, oh, you need to invest here or you need to invest there. No, just like, hey, dipshit, save your fucking money. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, I, I regret... Um, you know, losing contact with my daughter for uh, a number of years. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Shout out to my munchkin. <laughs> Is she watching this? Uh, I don't know. I hope so. Uh, I, I've, I've told her about her podcast, so we'll see. Okay. Yeah. She gives me the whole uh, Minnesota oop. Oop. Oops. <laughs> I'm going um, to Minnesota in October. Bundle up. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah. I went a uh, couple years in a row in November for my daughter's birthday. and uh, It's cold as fuck in November. Yeah. Yeah, the first time I went up there, um, I, I took three 16-year-old girls to the mall on a Saturday night. That sounds like a bad plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Needless to say, uh, I let them all know before we got out of my truck. Uh, I am carrying a loaded weapon mm-hmm. and uh, I have no problems fucking shooting any boy that uh, wants to come talk to you. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, See, I joined the army in 2005, uh, Iraq, uh, November of 05, yeah, November of 06. Talk about your Iraq and Afghanistan. And yeah. Um, Afghanistan, uh, March of 08 to March of 09, and then August of 10 to August of 11. Um, Iraq, I got... Um, I got blown up June 21st, 2006. Uh, Truck ran over uh, three uh, 155 uh, artillery shells. Um, I thought I was completely blinded um, when the, uh, I was up in the gun turret uh, on top of the truck when the uh, explosion, whenever we rolled over it. uh, And I got to give a shout out to uh, my boy, Matt, and uh my boy brandon hope you guys watch this uh we were on a raised road uh and the road was just barely you know wider than a humvee and it was right before uh like an s curve i mean it wasn't too sharp but uh somehow matt was able to keep our truck up on the road and get around the uh the two curves um Window came in on uh, Brandon, and uh, he took a piece of strap on the arm. Uh, windows are like six inches thick, and uh, busted up his ankle really bad. Um, when the explosion hit, uh, apparently I got dirt or shit, whatever, I don't know, uh, behind my glasses, and I went forward. And it was a good thing I did because my 50 cal got thrown up off the fucking truck. Wow. I mean, the, 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 the weapon system went out, uh, and it pulled <laughs> the, the whole belt of ammo out of the can with it. Um, mm. but, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I couldn't, uh, perforated both my eardrums, uh, multiple concussions. Uh, once they got my eyes actually flushed, uh, I could, I could actually see, uh, lacerations to the back of my head. Um, One thing that does stick out, um, we were uh, 
doing recovery operations and I was uh, standing up by the, the lead truck and a van came down and the gunner was giving hand and arm signals and getting him to stop. And they just kept coming. Uh, I put my rifle up in my shoulder, uh, rotated my selector switch to uh, fire and I started squeezing the trigger and like last moment, like I, I hit that wall of the trigger and it was just like a, a fraction and then, you know, the, the weapon would have went off, mm-hmm. but, uh, I heard my name. I didn't hear, you know, Hembry or anything like that. No, I, I, I heard Matt and I, I, I couldn't hear anything because right. like I said, my eardrums were perforated. I, I wasn't hearing shit. Right. Uh, but I heard, I heard Matt and I immediately, uh, let go of the trigger weapon back on safe uh and i just i i i walked backwards away from uh the van back to the uh the truck uh ended up getting medevaced out with uh brandon and uh yeah that night uh (laughs) the uh Medics found out that uh, when it's 130 degrees outside, uh, you're not wearing drawers. Uh, right. They 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 started um, undressing me because uh, all of our medics from our unit was on Brandon because Brandon was a medic, and I had um, medics from uh, another unit, and they just happened to be uh, females. And uh, took my top off, took my T-shirt off. Uh, they went ahead and pulled my my boots off, and uh, they were about to have me uh, drop trowel. And uh, I, I start taking, uh, undoing my belt and everything. And the the doctor was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are, you, are you wearing any underwear?" And I'm like, "Ma'am, it's 130 degrees outside." Mm-hmm. No, I'm not. And she's like, ah, "Can we get this guy a gown?" And then they put me into a room. Uh, that was completely dark and I had t- two female medics like hands on my shoulders to to keep me up because you know when when your eardrums are perforated you lose your equilibrium mm-hmm. you know you're uh, and they're holding me up so I can get my pants off so they can like r- do the complete check and everything and uh, yeah there was at that point there was no um, being bashful or anything like that. And it was just like, oh, I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm fucking alive. Um, well, yeah. I, I'll tell you a little secret. Mm-hmm. Whatever you, uh, crash your motorcycle about a mile up the road here, they cut every stitch of clothing off of you. And there you are. Yeah. Cause they're like going, Oh, there's bleeding here, bleeding here. Blah, 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 blah. They just cut everything off of you, and it don't yeah. matter, men, women, whatever. Um, you know, that was just a roadside collision. I yeah. can't imagine what you went through there. <laughs> uh, Brandon, all of his clothes were taken uh, because he actually, like, they, they, uh, he got met, a, he got uh, life flighted out, or not life flighted, but he got uh, sent to uh, one of the or, bigger hospitals uh, yeah. to, uh, because of his um, shrapnel on his arm and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, mine, uh, they should have taken my top and my T-shirt because from the uh, lacerations on the back of my head, I did get blood on him, but right. nah, it wasn't that bad. So I was like, sweet. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I've, and I've actually got a piece of shrapnel from my truck uh, at my house. Do you really? Yes, uh, cool. I don't know how I got it, but uh, I I got it back here. You need to you need to embed that in one of your bases. Well, I mean, we do have that that uh, one. There you go. Do the uh, silver burst on it. You need to embed that into the into the wood of that base. Yeah, maybe. That's thought. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah. Um. Yeah, the the two Afghanistan deployments were uh, comparatively um, 
my first Afghanistan deployment, I got down to 179 pounds. Uh, it, it was just hot, and I was doing dismounted patrols. Uh, I was really uh, changing the way I ate. And Iraq, I quit smoking, like mm. cold turkey, mm. uh, halfway through the deployment. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. My second Afghanistan appointment. God, fuck. Everything just kind of runs together. Ugh. Yeah, we deployed uh, August of 10, December 20th, 2010. Um, I smoked a cigar that belonged to uh, my buddy Curtis um, when his effects were uh, shipped back to the States. They could not ship uh, the cigars. So, uh, I got one of them and, you know, we all just kind of split them up between us. And that was the last thing I smoked and I went 18 months tobacco free uh. and it came down to, I'm either going to have a cigarette or I'm going to choke this little motherfucker mm. and I'm going to bury him in a shallow grave and all you motherfuckers are coming with me. <laughs> I, I despise the state of Kansas that much that it was like, okay, I don't want to have a cigarette here. I'm going to spend the rest of my life in fucking Leavenworth. All right. Yeah, Leavenworth ain't the place you want to be. No. I, I, I knew a person that got sent to Leavenworth, not, not for military stuff, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got uh, medically retired in uh, July of 14. And um, I moved back here May, no, um, Labor Day weekend 2019. So, uh, and I've been living in Kansas City since then. So, before the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, it, it's been nice because now I'm, I'm six and a half hours away from my daughter instead right. of 13. There you go. Um, yeah. And I, you're two and a half hours from here. Yes. Instead of nine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And you know, it, this has been a, a godsend, uh, being back in Kansas city and being able to come back down here and do this, um, you know, much like yourself, I've never been able to play with anybody else. Right. I've tried jamming with other people and I just couldn't do it. Right. And fuck, as a matter there's of fact, a, there's, a, there's I, I don't know how to explain it. There's a feel thing. Yeah. It's kind of like when Pip first joined the band. Whatever we were doing, um, Ron. Yeah. It was like, dun, 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 dun. You mean? Yeah. There, exactly. There, there's no time signature. There's no time signature. It's not a 4-4, four, 3-4, four, four, blah, 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 blah. It was a feel. It was just a, you know, just a... And whenever Pip joined the band, he was like, uh, and, and I watched him sitting here trying to count on his leg. Yeah. It's like, it's not a count. It's a feel. Right. You know, I don't know what time signature that shit was in. No, but I mean, we, you know? he ended up, he ended up picking it up. Oh, he did. Yeah. But I, you know, we, we never, we never said, okay, this is in 4-4, four, four, this is in 3-4, this is in blah, 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 yeah. blah. We just played. Right. And that was that was the cool thing about it. But So after our, all your years in the military? Uh, 17 years total. 17 years total. Yeah. And that's active, uh, reserve, and then active again. Right. So, do you get your full retirement or disability? No, or? Um, I'm disabled. Right. Um, you know, and, and it's not mental. I'm not mentally disabled. Yeah, okay. You know, <laughs> for the most part. Um, 
Yeah, and I, you know, since we got back together, um, I've kind of went went down a rabbit hole, uh-huh. and uh, yeah, I've. <laughs> Um, let's see here in the last, we'll say the last 18 months I have purchased one, two, three, four bases. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, in the last six months, I just uh, picked one up for you three? last Friday. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, yeah, the last six months would be three. Yeah. Uh, I finally got my dream Ibanez Iceman base. Right. Um, and I have, I've come to realize that I am an Ibanez player. There you go. I now have three Ibanezes. <laughs> well, hopefully, this is very hopefully, mm-hmm. we, could, we could let you get Chris down there to jam with us sometime. That would be great. Um, we definitely need to uh, find us a drummer. We do. We've got a drum kit. We've got a drum kit. Um. So if anybody out there that's watching this that is in the Buffalo Bolivar area and you do play drums, you know, uh, give us a thumbs up, you know, subscribe, leave us a comment. Like. Um, you know, the email address will be up there. So... Um, you know, yeah. yeah. Send us an email. Send us a drummer. Send us a drummer. In the subject line of the email, just uh, put, uh, you guys are the greatest. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about your personal life? Um, no, I don't care. I mean, I. Uh, <laughs> the, I mean, we gotta go with the divorces and shit. I'm well. <laughs> I've I've been uh, divorced for well over a decade. Um, I've only been married once. Uh, I've been engaged quite a few times. <laughs> um, what a few rings, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, my uh. Matter of fact, my daughter's mom uh, got two rings. Oh, really? <laughs> and we were never married. Um, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, there's nobody right now that, uh, and that's not, not to, not to bring it down or anything, but you know, that, that was, that was the hardest thing about after losing my mom mm. was my brother's, uh, they had their wives. Mm-hmm. I had nobody. Right. And, you know, everybody kept reaching out. Oh, yeah. man, if you need to talk, if you need, you know, anything like that, it's like, hey, yeah, that's great. But then when I hang up that phone or when I come back home, right, I'm alone. Mm-hmm. You know, and... Yeah, see, I, 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 I can't imagine that. Yeah. Because... Whenever I lost my dad, I was dating a woman. Mm-hmm. And, of course, I lost my mom in 2020. Yeah. And. You had your rock. I had my rock, you know. Yeah. And. Yeah, I. You don't know what to say. Yeah. At that point. This, it, this was like our buddy Andy. He just lost his dad. Yeah. And he's not married and stuff, and we're just gonna try to be there for him. Yeah, as and much as we can. And then, and that's the unfortunate part with his job. Mm-hmm. He is alone, right? <laughs> you know when, where they called me and told me mom had passed away. I was at work, and of course, I, I worked by myself. I mean, I'm the only I'm the only person in the shop, except for my boss. But I'm like, it just, I mean, I fell to my knees. Yeah. And it's like, fuck. But I couldn't do nothing at that time. 
you know, it wasn't like I could get up and go over there and do anything. Yeah. Of course, because everything was shut the fuck down. But you just you just get up and go on. Yeah. That's what you got to do. I mean, well, and, the, the one thing that I'll say, and, you know, um, and I, I, I don't mean this in any sort of disrespect or anything, but... You know, I'm I'm happy that you didn't get to watch your mom take her last breath. Oh, I know, because I because I, I did watch my my dad take his last breath. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I I've seen both sides, and it's like no, and that the <laughs> the uh, the the twisted part of my brothers and I. Um, a twisted sister part. Uh, no, no. <laughs> just my brothers. Uh, so you know, like in any in, in body, you know, when when they are completely gone, you know, the the body shuts down, and gas, uh, you know, everything, the the body, the re- soul leaves. The soul leaves. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you believe that way. We were we were all in the room, and you know uh, the heart monitor, you know, flatlined and everything. And then all of a sudden, just a <laughs> and without missing a beat, I was like, "Oh, mom! I had my mouth open and everything." <laughs> and I and the nurse, I mean, she was like in shock, <laughs> and you know, we we all just started laughing and you know it, it's when we went to the funeral home and did the um doing up the obituary and everything like that i mean we were we were i mean i'm pretty sure the lady thought that we were like mentally unstable because we were so fucked up right and i mean we were making jokes about everything mm. uh but that was that's our coping mechanism Exactly. That's that's the way you deal with the shit. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we grew up watching, like, gore. Like, my older brother would set my little brother and I, uh, and, and here, here's the age difference. My older brother was born in 70. My younger brother was born in 77. Mm-hmm. They are seven years and one day apart. Mm-hmm. And I'm smack dab in the middle. Uh. So, you know... Toxic Avenger, all the the Traumaville movies, uh, Return of the Living Dead, Brain, Brain. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if it was gory and it had boobs, probably seen it. Right. Yeah. It's like they're ripping heads off. Oh, what titties. Ooh. (laughs) Yep. All right. So, um, fuck. (laughs) Uh, yeah, this is this is gonna be fun to edit this. Oh, um, that'd be good. <laughs> so on that note, um, cause we're, we're we're doing a Rogan podcast now. We'll just like keep going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll probably get uh, maybe one view on this. Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah, two. Yeah. Be like, what the fuck. 45 minutes. Fuck this. Or they'll watch it and go, oh, I like these guys. Fuck. I want to watch the next one. What the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> um, but until next time. I'm James. And I am Matt. This is JM Solve the World. And until next time, don't you go changing. But make sure that you uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, leave a comment and uh, all that all that jazz. And if you if you if you like what's it on YouTube, share it on your Facebook and your Instagram and the Instagram Snapchat and, and the Snapchat, Twitter and all that shit. Yeah, all the, all the good stuff. Keep one foot in the gutter, one fist in the gold. But until next time, we'll be seeing you. Bye.